So if you're going to call fish, uh, veil kales especially, you start off, at, for me, this is the right size. Now, you know, 20 years ago, maybe they were half the size and I was, I just can't see them. And I've tried with magnifying glass, it's just not as much fun. And so, uh, if you come to my house on, during culling day, sometimes I'll have my grandkids uh, in, in grade school and they help me, you know. So, if you look at these fish, and these are uncalled, so this is what I got out of this one cross. And see so you single, see this fish here? So that's a single tail, right? So that would go away. And so there's there's a couple more single tails over here, or really clamp tails. You're always when you do veil tails, and you want them to look like a veil. You're not really sure whether to get rid of those fish that are um, single uh, clamp tails because it's an acceptable trait. Uh, and so this fish here, uh, I lost him. Here it is. Real long tail. No. Well, yes, but that's not the why I'm getting rid of it. See that? Look at that fish. And that is what we call the um, crow's foot. See how the tail as it leaves the back end of the fish, start the base of the tail, it's kind of like this. And that, that is, you know, like a butterfly remnant. So that fish would be terminated, you know, and you can keep it, but I tell you, as it gets older, that trait gets uglier. So, and so, you know, these are kind of marginal for me. Uh, and they might be a little bit little for me to ch check out. But if you look at them, closely see the base of the tail is not right there it's too wide and it's it's uh, it has that what we call crow's foot and and so then this fish here is not necessarily a call see that's not a veil tail is it or is it what do you think pretty short huh but is it square Is the tail square or is it indented? It looks like it's indented or something. Okay, I, I would look at that fish and say, yeah, indented. indented okay. okay, but I keep some of those because I may well, if it's got a, if the tail is split and slightly indented, I still might keep it. And so it, it's kind of critical that, that you know, the first time you do this by yourself, it's kind of like, what do I do? And so this fish here, what do you say about that fish? The tail looks fine. It looks square to me. Is the tail square? Yeah. Is the tail fused or is it split? Oh, I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> Is it fused? I think it's fused. Yeah, it's fused. Oh. Yeah, so so you never keep a fused tail veil in the Philadelphia side. It's, it's just, you're just asking for, if you breed to that, you may well get all fused tails and then you got nothing, you know? So I, I would probably look at it on a little bit better. I usually have a lamp right here so I can look at it better, but um, pretty much beautiful square tail about the right length I like uh, but uh, it's that that's there's no split so if it's like this you just don't keep them you know it's not like ranch you know, where you might it, keep is it. Is split just purely aesthetic though it doesn't really mess with the swimming later on? It doesn't mess with the swimming but it's dominant oh, okay. so that if you breed to a fused tail veil tail you may well end up with all fused tails in the next generation. Yes. That's not yeah. good. So, so, so you know, I would get rid of that single tail. This fish here. Let's look at this fish. Tell me what you guys think of that. Probably a hard to see. Yeah. He's, he's looking pretty perfect, right? Well, he's split, 
But see, the tail's really short, right? And it's kind of fanned. Uh, uh, Rolly has it correctly. It's it's kind of way out like this. See, it's more butterfly-like. Uh, it's more butterfly-like. Now, if it doesn't have that crow's foot trait, and it's butterfly-like, it'll gradually go like this, okay. which is okay. But what, I, what I've told you is that when you select for veils, you have to keep a couple of short tails for your breeders. You don't necessarily give those to people unless they're gonna breed them. But it's a certain number of those, the prettiest ones, you keep. And so I would raise three or four of these, five or six of these, and as they get this big and they're beautiful, that would be a cross for the next year if the tail is split and the tail is square. So. This one's no good. This is the tail to collapse or is this too long? Well, look at the base of the tail. Foot, that's yeah. that's oh, crow's okay. foot thing again, you know? Yeah. And so that you just can't keep those. So these these guys are way better. This is this is a pretty nice fish if that tail split and I really can't see it in this light. And, and you know, it's not like a chore that you have to do. You open these up and you're looking at them and you're going, uh, I don't know, are, are these tail splits or not split? Well, don't throw them away. Yeah. Put them back in the tank and grow them up for two more weeks and, yeah. you know, don't drink a whole bunch of beer the night before you can <laughs> probably see better, you know. But, uh, you know, so, sometimes um, this one's definitely fused. I can see that that's fused. Pretty nice tail, but it's fused. How far does the split go down? Doesn't have to be all the way, okay. but it has to be partially split. If it's partially split, that split will sometimes enlarge, which is good. Mm -hmm. And if it's completely split, that's, that's typical. Um, there was an outcross um, that is a very tiny percentage of my genetic makeup of my line. It was to a Jeekin, like 15 years ago. And you'll get that extreme split all the way to the, all the way to the base of the tail sometimes, and it, it appears to be the Jeekin genetics just popping up and really tall, uh, small variety. So, but you know, there's a couple. We're not calling these very hard because uh, I'm going to give them to R R Rolly to take home, and he's going to mess with them. You know, and this is more than he asked for. So if anybody wants to try some, you should take them. Take some. That was pretty good. Now, I, I always read that you want to try to call so hard, real hard, real fast, so you, you know you give most potential to, to the leftovers. That's right. But, so you're growing them out a little bigger. Are you, are you, and then it has to do with my eyesight. But is, is it detrimental at all to what you do grow out? You know what I'm saying? Like, well, it's ex it's it's expensive. More expensive. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's relatively high risk because. You know, the more, the higher the density is, the fish get bigger, the more chance you're going to come home and have an upset due to the water quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so you tend to want to be, get down to 20% of the original spawn size. Uh, I don't know, by a month, by six weeks. So I'd say six weeks for me. And so, some people are way better at it and call harder. You know, it's a hobby for me, right? I like to see what's going on, you know? I mean, if you th call really, really hard, you get really superior fish, but you never get any cool stuff because you've already thrown it away. So. Um, but so basically, like if, if I were, if I have a big spawn and I split them up between tubs, yeah, that's pretty much the way. What, what I do, what I do is I'll get a spawn out like this. This spawn was maybe 500 fish, right? Mm -hmm. And I hatched them in a bowl. They were in a bowl. Uh, they were not. A, this was a hand spawn. So I hand spawned them. They were in a bowl. They hatched. They spent three, four days in a bowl. I don't move them to a tank until they're ready to eat. And so sometimes I'll do the first feeding in the bowl and then they'll start eating. And then at two weeks, I go through very carefully. I take one swipe and put it in another tank. So I do approximately a split two weeks. And then in the next two weeks, I'll do another split. So at four weeks, I've gone from one tank to four tanks for a spawn like this. 
and at somewhere near four weeks before they get split sometimes I'll call them if they're big enough. If they're not, uh, if they're not big enough then, then I'll give them another week or so at a, at a four tank volume. So. That's it. Questions? Anybody else want to look at any more? What about the colors? Should you keep them indoors, outdoors? Well, um, in Ohio this time of year you have no choice, you know. And so um, people say, well, how do you get that brilliant red? If I have a fish that needs to be red, they don't turn the lights off. And if you want really, really great color, uh, you'll grow them in green water at some point. The, the chlorophyll, as the xanthine and in the, in, in the, in the algae, will give them great reds. And the great black, you either have to have intense bulb light 24 hours a day, or you got to put them outside. And most of your blacks, uh, I, I, we, we think, and we're not sure, but we think that blue color and calico often exist, but it's not stable because we don't get them outside fast enough. But we're not sure about that. Some people would probably say, nah, that's not true. Well, we think it's true. That's so, right. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's snow and icy in Cincinnati, so.